I have to say something that I did not discuss in my previous videos discussing Ghost of Tsushima. I truly did not have this game with the same expectations that I have with The Last of Us Part 2. To be frank with you guys, I was way more excited to play this game because of how beautiful this game looked and because the gameplay looked very fun. I was actually a bit concerned about the story and if Sucker Punch was going to deliver a solid story with this game. I love open world games, but they usually suffer in the story department most of the time because some developers choose to add more story missions than necessary to make the game longer and bigger and sometimes it just feels like it's drags and it's kind of boring. And honestly, the first hours of Ghost of Tsushima was kind of boring for me. I did not feel connected with the characters at all and I really feared that this game was never going to win me over. But I was very, very wrong. After a few hours, after learning how the gameplay worked and just basically learning everything about the story little by little, I got completely hooked. Of course, no game is or will ever be perfect. And there are some issues that this game actually has, but there is so much good in this game that it basically overshadows anything that is bad in this game in my opinion. And after that little rough start that I had with Ghost of Tsushima, I can truly say that after finishing Ghost of Tsushima, that I can truly see why this game actually has the most positive user review scores on Metacritic, and I can actually say that I underestimated how good this game turned out to be and how much I began to enjoy it. I can't wait to tell you guys what I think about this open world game that is so beautiful and so immersive and let you know that Jin Sakai's adventure in Ghost of Tsushima is worth playing through because this game is truly a flawed masterpiece in my opinion. So let's get started. When you first start to play Ghost of Tsushima, you automatically see how impressive the graphics look. The trailers shown in E3 and the gameplay shown in the state of play a few months ago showcased how this game had the potential to look, and honestly, watching this game on YouTube truly does not do justice to this game. Even if you post this game on 4K on YouTube, because of the video compression, it loses a lot of quality and the only way to appreciate this game is to play it for yourself on your monitor or TV. Trust me, do it. From beginning to end, this game has jaw-dropping moments visually almost every single time you play or you see a cutscene. And I truly cannot say enough of how impressed I am with this game. Every time I traveled from one destination to another, I just had my mouth opened every single time seeing how beautiful Sucker Punch made this island of Tsushima look. Every inch of the island is completely unique, nothing ever feels copy or pasted. No matter where I went, I was just shocked and blown away seeing beautiful colors splash all over the map and it was very satisfying to experience. And to play this game with a 4K HD monitor really made my experience so freaking amazing and immersive. I barely fast traveled anywhere because I wanted to see more of the island and see more of the hard work Sucker Punch has dedicated to this game. It was like looking at a painting while I played this game. And in my opinion, it's a visual masterpiece and has completely overtaken God of War and Horizon Zero Dawn as the most beautiful PS4 exclusive to date in my eyes. It is so beautiful, it is the only game I've actually spent so much time in photo mode trying to make as many beautiful screenshots as possible. It became an actual obsession and sometimes distracted me from continuing with the story, so I have to say Sucker Punch, you guys are amazing and you guys have outdone yourselves with Ghost of Tsushima in the graphical department and it will be a robbery if Ghost of Tsushima does not win an award of how beautiful this game looks. Honestly, I would recommend this game just because of how beautiful it looks. Now, the only complaint that I have is the facial animations. The faces of the characters look realistic, yes, but the facial animations and the expressions sometimes felt flat when trying to show emotion. Just like for example if you get a tragic scene, uh, their facial animations weren't that believable and looked very stiff. 
Honestly, after seeing what Naughty Dog did with The Last of Us Part 2 and the way they focused on making facial animations so believable, Ghost of Tsushima falls short on that shamefully, but if you can get past that, then you'll be fine because it's not a deal breaker in my opinion. The gameplay is honestly the best thing about this game by far. If the gameplay sucked, finishing this game would have been a challenge for me. But it's so freaking addictive, and I love the different combat mechanics Sucker Punch implemented in this game. You basically have three combat types to make this gameplay a little bit more fun and pleasant to experience when you upgrade Jin. You have the samurai combat skills, which basically upgrades the way you use your sword and evade attacks. You have your sword stances, in which you basically unlock by killing a number of Mongol leaders during your journey. And every stance helps you defeat a specific enemy type easier. For example, you would use the stone stance to kill enemies who use swords easier. Or you would use the water stance to kill those enemies who use shields and are much harder to kill. So basically, all the stances basically makes it a little bit easier to kill enemies with different types of abilities. And finally, you have the ghost skills to enhance your stealth and extra artifacts like smoke bombs or poison darts that come in handy when you're trying to stealth your way through certain sections. Upgrading Jin was so much fun, and honestly, it was a blast trying new skill moves and learning how most things I upgraded really affected the way I engaged in combat in a noticeable way, making it easier versus stronger enemies when I faced them head to head or sneaking my way through a big chunk of enemies. Combat is almost flawless in my opinion. Now, where the gameplay is really, really bad and it's very noticeable is with stealth and enemy AI. I was truly baffled on how easy some stealth sections became because of how dumb the enemy AI is. You couldn't feel like the ghost of Tsushima because it wasn't actually a challenge. Even on hard mode, it's kind of easy to fool the enemies in this game. It's just funny to see how dumb these enemies are and how I could sometimes just stay in one corner and just shoot arrows at them because basically they would come, see a body pile, and just keep coming, just making it so easy to just stay hidden and keep killing them like nothing. It is a very disappointing factor of this game, honestly, and that is why most of the time, if it wasn't necessary to kill all Mongols in a certain section, I would just directly go to my destination, basically sneaking my way through, because basically it's kind of easy to do it. And if I wanted some action, then I would just go ahead and fight the Mongols. It got real boring real quick just to doing stealth, because it was that easy, and it was just truly a shame. But overall, combat is nearly flawless and I enjoyed the game way more when I faced my enemies head on than doing stealth and honestly just combat was so addictive it was great to see. Sometimes I would even go on purpose to look for more mongols to kill because it was that fun. Gameplay so smooth just everything went so well except stealth and enemy AI it's kind of a disappointment in that case but it's fine. At least combat is so much fun. Now, before we end the gameplay part of this review, I have to talk to you guys about the loading times of this game. When you start the game from the main menu or you fast travel, the loading times in this game is so freaking fast. It doesn't even give me time to even use my phone to respond to a message or to do something for at least 10 seconds because it's that fast. Like, basically, I don't think that I'm the only gamer here that is just used to seeing games usually having long enough loading times so that you can basically use your phone to make time pass and basically all that. With this game, it's almost impossible to do that, and that's freaking awesome. Honestly, this is an amazing accomplishment from Sucker Punch, and I don't think enough people are talking enough about this.
Like I said in my in-depth review about The Last of Us Part 2, if the music sucks, the game will fall apart for me. Sometimes, a game with great music can take the game from being a good game to a great game. And, depending on how good the game is, it can even be considered a masterpiece. Like for example, The Last of Us Part 1. That game became my favorite game ever made, not just because of the story, but because the music was so perfect and iconic, it basically got me to feel everything Naughty Dog wanted me to feel, and it took the game to another level. And even to this day, I still listen to the soundtrack when I'm driving or just out for a run. Honestly, it never gets old. So, is Ghost of Tsushima's music good? No, it's not good. It's a freaking masterpiece. Look, at the end of the day, this video is just my opinion. And basically, my opinion will never be the only right one. But for me, the music in Ghost of Tsushima is truly one of my favorite soundtracks in any video game ever. I don't know if I'm just a sucker for classic Japanese style of music, and I'm probably being biased here, but honestly, wow. Like, when the epic moments occur in this game, the music is on point, making you feel the pressure, the high stakes of the situation you're in. When you're in a calm situation, the music is calm, smooth, and just perfect. If I have to choose my favorite soundtrack of this game, it will be called Sacrifice of Tradition, and that track basically is masterful. It's so freaking good, just hear it for yourself. Just listen to the intensity and the emotion shown in this epic track. And I won't say what happens in basically when this soundtrack is happening, of course, because it might spoil the game for you guys, but honestly, all I can say is that I cried like a freaking bitch hearing this and basically playing through what I was playing with this soundtrack. It was just ah, <laughs> another level. Trust me, if you guys at the end of the day decide not to play this game, at least listen to the soundtrack. It is honestly legendary and I cannot say anything more to praise this soundtrack. It's easily one of the best soundtracks of the year and 
by far one of the best I've ever heard in a video game. And yes, this year, if this game does not win any awards for the music as well, I'm going to riot, because <laughs> it's honestly sheer perfection. So first I'm going to basically say what I felt about the story in a non-spoiler way. And what I have to say is that I really enjoyed this game a lot. Probably at first because I did not know much about the characters and because the way Sucker Punch edited their cutscenes aren't as good as compared to other games, it also did not help me to get invested in the story or care about the characters at first in this game. And the facial animations really did not always help in the more emotional scenes. But after I started to know more about Jin and his supporting characters a little bit more and to see how the story was evolving together with the soundtrack, amazing gameplay, great side quests that had its little stories and a more than decent main story, I honestly started to love this game way more and the story was a pleasure to finish. It is a must play if you are in love with samurai stories because it's truly one of the best and if you are someone that just wants to try something completely new, this is a good story to experience. And for us PlayStation fanatics, there isn't a better way to end the era of the successful PlayStation 4 than with Ghost of Tsushima. Ghost of Tsushima's story was my biggest concern for this game, and the first hour or two had me worried that this game was basically going to make me right about my concerns. I was very worried that this game was only going to be a beautiful game carried by its fantastic gameplay and graphics. And of course, I was wrong and I truly underestimated Ghost of Tsushima and the talented developers at Sucker Punch. On paper, a revenge story of a samurai known as Jin Sakai wanting to avenge the death of many of his own samurai family and to restore peace to his home island in Tsushima by killing the Mongols in a non-samurai way and becoming a savage like the Mongols to destroy them isn't at all unique or impressive. But where the game uses this story and actually makes it very good is by showing the emotional and psychological challenges Jin Sakai goes through to save his people by leaving the samurai way, which is how he was basically taught all his life and instead become the ghost of Tsushima. Just like Jin's uncle said, a samurai honors his opponent by facing them and killing them by looking right at their eyes and killing them with honor and respect. Only a coward would kill them any other way. And this is exactly what Jin becomes, a coward. Jin realizes after meeting Yuna that actually to defeat the Mongols, he must become a coward, a savage, just like the Mongols and sometimes show no honor and breaking the samurai way because the Mongols have no honor and just kill to kill. Seeing Jin struggle with this and seeing how it basically became too much on him mentally when he basically had to use stealth for the first time to kill a Mongol and him having flashbacks remembering what his uncle taught him that basically doing this makes him a coward and just basically seeing that scene that's where the story took off for me. It is amazing to see Jin completely shocked by what he has done and understands that he has no choice but to continue down this path to liberate Tsushima. Jin during this whole story cares so much about his people, his family, his friends, his uncle that he will leave all he knows, all he owns to save everyone he loves even though that might cost him his honor, his status as a samurai lord or even might cost the respect and love from his uncle, Lord Shimura. During this whole story, we see the conflict between Jin and his uncle, Lord Shimura, and when Jin's uncle sees Jin completely breaking the samurai way in order to save his life and others, his uncle appreciated what Jin did by saving him from the Mongols in the first act of the game, but begged Jin not to go down that path. 
and when the story completely became incredibly awesome was when we got to see the conflict between Jin and his uncle Lord Shimura reach a breaking point. Lord Shimura, Jin's uncle, wanted to fight head on with honor, but Jin wanted to infiltrate the Mongols by sneaking up on them and poison them, basically killing them with stealth, and in that case, with no honor, to save the lives of Lord Shimura's men. No one had to die, but Lord Shimura wanted to fight with honor and slapped Jin, making him very angry and basically he just went on instead and infiltrated the Mongols alone. He poisoned them, he fought his best friend to the death because he sided with the Mongols and was forced to kill his friend. And basically after that we see Lord Shimura and his men completely amazed of what Jin did in a bad way. Lord Shimura was imploring Jin to say that it was all Yuna's fault that basically drove him to act like this and Jin wouldn't actually do that. He would basically rather face the consequences of his own actions and Jin took responsibility and that basically shamed his uncle by doing so. And he had Yuna escape and decided to face judgment instead by the hands of his own uncle who wanted to adopt him as a son and fight side by side commending the samurai as father and son to victory versus the Mongols. That dream was completely shattered and Lord Shimura's heart broke into tiny pieces. And even though Jin was right to do what he did to save so many lives, at the end of the day, for the samurai, it's dishonor. The mentality that the samurai had, even though it's a respectful way to kill your enemy, it's so close-minded, it basically could cost the lives of so many other people with no reason other than to die with honor. And Jin couldn't let that happen and preferred to be ridiculed and hated so that he could save his people and those who he loved. Sometimes the right thing to do is to break the rules sometimes for a noble purpose than to sacrifice the lives of so many people just to obey what someone else says or to follow tradition. After seeing all of this unfold, I truly fell in love with this story. Jin escaped to find Yuna and his equipment to go and basically kill the Khan himself to end the war. I remember feeling so bad for Jin because he truly loves his uncle and he wanted his uncle to forgive him by personally sneaking into his palace and delivering him a letter explaining his feelings and asking for help to kill the Khan. It broke my heart to see this. And the samurai show up later on, and Jin fights the Khan, kills him in an epic battle for Tsushima, and one I will remember for a long time. Plus, in hard mode, the Khan boss battle was brutal. I honestly died so many freaking times, I recorded like almost 2 hours of footage just trying to defeat this man. It was so freaking satisfying when I finally defeated that man, cause honestly, Ah, I, I honestly defeated him by the skin of my teeth. It was so freaking satisfying. Now, this is where I thought the story was actually going to end. Jin was going to reconcile with his uncle and probably the samurai were going to forgive Jin for how he acted and just have a generic happy to this story. But no, it was all false illusion on myself. The reality was that the Shogun have branded Jin as a traitor and Lord Shimura himself was ordered to kill his nephew, his only family. Jin was like a son to him and almost legally became his son. So imagine the pain Lord Shimura had to go through. All he's known was the samurai way and there was no changing him. So no matter how much Jin begged him not to go through with this, Lord Shimura was not going to be stopped. Seeing how Jin suffered, paying his respects to his Sakai family members who have passed away, knowing that he had no other option but to face his father figure, his only family, in a battle to the death. Both of their suffering was unbearable, and if I thought the fight between Abby and Ellie in The Last of Us Part 2 was freaking intense, then honestly, this is on another level. And at the end, Jin wins and Lord Shimura begs Jin to do the right thing and to end his life with honor as a true samurai. We as the player are given a choice. 
to spare his uncle, even though his uncle will now hate him forever and actually have to pursue him, or to end his uncle's life with honor and respect, knowing his uncle at the end loved him and wanted him to know that he did the right thing. So I chose the option that for me was the right one for Jin and Lord Shimura's relationship. And it was basically to kill Lord Shimura. I did it because even though Jin would have had to kill his only family, Jin would have known at least that he's fulfilling his uncle's wishes, that he would be doing the right thing by his uncle's eyes, and that he would redeem himself to his uncle at the end. He would know that his uncle died truly loving him, and Lord Shimura even told Jin to find him in the other life. It was truly emotional to experience, and this option was one of the most intense scenes I've ever experienced in a video game. The raw emotions shown in this scene, seeing Jin scream after Lord Shimura died, the performance here is just sheer perfection. I want you guys to look at this scene and tell me if this isn't the perfect way to end the story. I will make sure you are remembered as a great warrior, a wise leader, and a father. Thank you, my son. Find me in the next life. I will. One of the most powerful endings in a video game ever, in my opinion. Way better than the ending to spare his uncle, in my opinion. I did like the sparing option because you can see the pain Lord Shimura is going through, seeing that his only family is acting with no honor, and at the same time, Jin being human and not even thinking about killing his only family, no matter what the consequences are. But it's just not as impactful in my opinion compared to honoring your uncle by killing him and knowing that he loved you until the end, instead of leaving him alive and Lord Shimura being forced to hunt you down for the rest of your life. This is Ghost of Tsushima, a tale of a samurai who had to become a coward, a savage to become hated by his own people to save them all and his home. A story of a man who decided to sacrifice everything he knew, owned and loved for the well-being of his own people. It is a story that I truly recommend experiencing and is truly one of the best ways to end the PS4 era. All I could do after the end credit scenes started to show up was basically stand up, clap, and say thank you to Sucker Punch for one of the best games ever made. A flawed masterpiece. Subscribe to my channel for more gaming content like this and like the video if you guys enjoyed the video and also because it really helps the channel out. Also, join me every single Sunday from now on for live streams of me basically playing any games or just talking with you guys and remember to follow me on the socials, so let's have a great conversation over there. Also, let me know in the comment section down below, which option did you choose? Did you spare Lord Shimura, or did you kill him? And I would love to know your reasons why. 
Thank you for being the most amazing supporters anyone could ever have. And I cannot wait to talk to you guys about the next games coming out very soon later this year with you guys. Stay positive, stay safe, keep playing, and I'll see you guys next time.